So anyone who has spent any time in IT realizes documentation is important. And especially when you take on a new client or a new project or a new job where you're head of IT and they go, where's all of our devices? And you've realized no one has documented up until this point or the documentation is just completely wrong. And both of those are instances we're dealing with very frequently on, in the IT industry. So we took on a new client and there's no documentation, which is not uncommon. Uh, often they reach out when they realize the IT guy just didn't know what he was doing and got in over his head. Uh, I joked around the other day, fake it till you make it. It's a horrible idea in a lot of industries. IT is definitely one of them. The other one's doctors. You don't want a brain surgeon like that either. So let's talk about NMAP and network discovery. Now, there's some commercial tools out there, and I guess they're cool and whatnot that, that find some things and monitor stuff. And But I come down to, I start with NMAP all the time. It's free, it's easy to use, uh, it's open source, it's very, very powerful. But what do you do with all the data? So great, it discovered all the things, Tom, but let's talk about what to do with it. And I've covered before um, other interfaces like ZenMap, which make it easy to get started with NMAP. You know, you got a nice interface on top of it to start putting all the data together. But when the rubber hits the road, you need to create like a spreadsheet and start really putting together, you know, all the client stuff and start doing the discovery of what, what are all the devices. Now, a couple of ways you can do this. If you're lucky enough to have a PFSense at the head of the network, Awesome. If you're able to talk the client into installing PFSense at the head of the network, also awesome. The reason why, PFSense uh, has an NMAP package, standard command line NMAP, so you can SSH into the PFSense machine, and you're attached directly to all the networks because PFSense would be at the head end. That allows you to scan all the different segments of the network very easily from one central spot, and you're going to dump all that to an XML file, and then from there, you can use the next tool we're going to talk about. Other options are, you know, dropping off a laptop or something running Linux, even a Raspberry Pi, which is pretty, you know, expensive, low cost, plugged into the client's network, Hopefully it's in a spot that has access to the entire network so you can do it all in one trip. And from there, you can start, create, you know, use that, let it run and create logs. Now, the reason I say drop off as opposed to wait there, maybe you have time to build by the hour when you're there. But I'll, to really run NMAP on a slow, comprehensive, on a larger network with a few different class Cs, it may take a while. It may have a lot of devices. You may have to run it more than once because the devices are turning on and off so you can consolidate data. Um However, the methodology for for doing this, dumping it out to an XML file, sometimes does take a little while because, well, there's a lot of IPs to scan, and NMAP is, has very great options to be very thorough. And we're going to talk about some of the thoroughness of it here um, by doing my network. So here's a quick little tool. is an add-on. Um, well, Python script. So first, we're going to use NMAP. Standard, that's... You know, we're assuming uh, if you're watching this, you've already known how to use ZenMap. Plenty of tutorials, and I have one I'll leave a link below on using ZenMap. Then we're going to run this NMAP converter. This is just an open source GitHub project. Link will be linked below in the description. So we're going to clone or download it, and then you're going to install it with uh, th these couple tools here. So pip install Python libmap, uh, sudo pip install XLS writer. Just so you know, you may get an error depending on your distribution if you try to run sudo. This is the Python installer scripts. Some of them want you to run sudo, some of them you don't. Try it. Uh, that's easy enough to do. So if you get the sudo error, just run it without it. And it sometimes, uh, for example, running pop OS here works fine without running sudo. You get a permissions error if you try to run sudo with it. So the usage is really straightforward. It's uh, nmap convert dash py and the output file you want. So well, let's just close this and show it in action. So before the video, I actually ran nmap and this is the command output I ran. Kind of a basic nmap scan. And ox and then tom underscore office dot xml and some of the other nmap options to you know, do a nice verbose logging of the 192.168.3.0 slash 24 network that this machine is attached to. So pretty straightforward, and um, I already ran this. So let's look at the output. We have Tom's office.xml. So let's take a look at that. Well, we'll get it by. And great, it's all kinds of wonderful data and, and header outputs and everything else and certificate information, all, all this great stuff. Now, one nice thing about NMAP is when you run it in XML, you get a lot of data. So there's plenty in here to pull through, lots of great information, and that's important. So 
Let's make this more readable. Matter of fact, this is why I talked about MacVert. We're going to make it to a spreadsheet. So the command is pretty straightforward. So the nmap converter tool is really easy to run. Just uh, nmapconverter.py, the XML file, we happen to call it Tom's Office, the output file.xls. So we called it LTS Office. So we're going to go ahead and press Enter. Simple screen output, it's pretty fast depending on the you know, size of the file. I have a fast computer here. So it has some of the things in here. Sometimes it has IP addresses, sometimes it has names if they had names. Great, cool. Now we've converted it to an Excel file. So let's go ahead and open up that XLS file now. Okay, so the file's produced, and now we gotta get the file off of here and see what it looks like. So here's that file, ltsoffice.xls. We're gonna open up in LibreOffice. So we have a summary, and we'll expand some of these pages out. Here's the summary of this particular scan, what was run, hosts up, hosts down, based on the total scan of 256 hosts. There's the command that was used, the version, scan type, awesome. Now we have the results file here. We're gonna move that out like this and let's look at the host file here. All right, now the OS one I already made too wide, so let me fix that. There we go. Let's make these a little bit wider. And the OS one. Now we're also going to go ahead and fix the formatting because I already know if we go through here, some of these kind of wrap around. So we're going to go ahead and uh, reformat this. Hit OK. That way we can just word wrap and it figures out what things are. Next thing we're going to do is we can filter for status. I don't care about the down systems. We only want to see the up ones. And as you can see, we're starting to build a nice little network map of devices. Now, this is really odd to me, um, and this is where it gets kind of strange. It decided that this particular machine is a Fortinet. I have no idea why. Um, it's not, it's running Linux, and it's running um, the Unify software. So interesting that it decided it's a Fortinet. Um, and I did modify this. That's not the actual address at the top for those of you running. Your, there's no multiple X's. I just took out what the actual address where it goes to. Um, but the rest of them, it seems to have gotten right. Linux, which kernels on there and things like that. Now, this is also interesting because it recognized some of the virtual interfaces. It recognized that these are running Linux. These are my UBC cameras, different machines on there, the eight port switch. Uh, that's also a Unify switch, Unify cameras. And it found some printers on there, HP embedded. We do have some printers on our network. This is actually a FreeBSD uh, virtual machine or jail, I should say, not really virtual machine. And uh, then it found our FreeBSD uh, free NAS box, which is running right here, and a few other things. So this is pretty cool. Now let's talk about the results. This is where we're going to filter for status open, hit OK, and start finding things. Now something interesting here, and this is that security by obscurity through security thing that people do by go, oh, I'll just change the port, and this is where Nmap is very helpful to you. We're actually going to talk about um, the methods and the services that it's running. So let's go filter for services here. We're going to turn off the all and filter for this. And this is something I wanted to show you because you'll find on some devices, and it's reasonably accurate here. You notice not all of these are port 80. When it determines the service to be HTTP or HTTPS, it's doing it because of a header check that it got in there. So the header check is actually because you want to know exactly what it is. So like right here is a Cisco config. This one is on port 80. But right here, Verata EM Web, and you can see the device ID, port 631. That's a printer. Um, yeah, this should be a printer on here. But now you're getting, it even says right here, it's HEP laser to HTTP config files. So this is where Nmap becomes really handy. Nmap is able to start digging in and go, what is the actual response on these ports? And if you do a full port scan of every single IP on the network, it takes a really long time. But because it's identifying, you can then filter for service and whether or not that is running in SSL. So you can start finding those devices that 
uh, especially when previous IT people think, oh, I'll just hide it on a different port and that'll keep people from finding it or anything like that. Well, this is where it gets really handy because now you can start finding all those random ports people did and start really digging into all the devices. And this is really handy. Like I said, it puts it all in the spreadsheet for you and allows you to start creating your documentation on there. And there's a lot of things you can find. You're like, why? Is there a Telnet service open? You know, which I know is a printer. It's We have an old HP Jet Direct. And yeah, I know it could be considered a security risk on this, but this is our semi-public network they have this on. But this is going to get you an idea, though, that it's easy to get started with it. None of these tools cost you a dime. Uh, just they're great to learn, great to program on your own network so you can start, you know, digging into things and figuring out what things are on your network. Also look at the responses, start making little notes in here and start updating stuff and going, what is this and how does this work? And if you have PFSense as your head end, easy enough, just install the NMAP package, also free. You can run this on PFSense and start digging into your own network and finding all the devices. And like I said, the advantage of running it from PFSense, if it's, if, especially if you have multiple networks and PFSense is the head of it, it can see all the legs of the network at once and start digging in and finding all those devices. But hopefully this was helpful and shows you kind of a, a neat, it's a neat free tool to start doing this, but it's also something we actually use to start dropping it on clients networks that are undocumented just to find all the things that they have on there um because you never know even though they have dhcp you don't know what got statically assigned and where and this can help sort out all those ip conflicts you start running into um when you are going okay why is this not assigned dhcp why is it in the range and start uh bringing all the chaos of taking on a new it position <laughs> down to a manageable spreadsheet devices and organized Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Leave us some feedback below to let us know any details, what you like and didn't like as well, because we love hearing the feedback. Or if you just want to say thanks, leave a comment. If you want to be notified of new videos as they come out, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell icon. That lets YouTube know that you're interested in notifications. Hopefully they send them, <laughs> as we've learned with YouTube. Anyways, if you want to contract us for consulting services, you go ahead and hit lawrencesystems.com and you can reach out to us for all the projects that we can do and help you. We work with a lot of uh, small businesses, IT companies, even some large companies, and you can farm different work out to us or just hire us as a consultant to help design your network. Also, if you want to help the channel in other ways, we have a Patreon. We have affiliate links. You'll find them in the description. You'll also find recommendations to other affiliate links and things you can sign up for on lawrencesystems.com. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.